Hey there, ADB024 Aaron here. I'm uh, going to attend kind of a little town hall meeting. I'm running a little late. That's okay. It's uh, actually of state representatives. Um, this is something uh, that's crucial also. You know, a lot of us are into the, uh, the national uh, constitution, but also uh, should know your state constitution also. I'll put a link in the sidebar to Oregon's and check out your own states. Um, and it really should work the same as the, uh, the U.S. Constitution. But uh, here it is, a little town hall meeting, running late. I'll go in there. It's got some... Uh, I wasn't sure what uh, Representative Hoyle said when she started. Um, I thought she said something that she was involved in offshoring businesses. No, I did not say that. Let's be really clear about that right now. Okay. I work for American companies, and we work to sell our American-made products to other countries, specifically my, the areas of focus that I had were Europe and Asia. So we're clear on that. I have never, <laughs> ever, ever worked to offshore company. We're clear on that, right? Okay. That's all he asked. Actually, no, he asked a broader question. And he and asked we will about get Jesus. to your question. We've already asked a question, so we'll get, but we will get back to you again. Let Nancy finish in this. So I think we need to look at that as also as part of the comprehensive reform, as well as the kicker. What are we doing about the deduction outcome? Um, if we can do that, then I think that in the next session, we'll have a very good outcome. So next, I'm kicking people again who have not an answer, haven't, uh, haven't asked a question yet. Perfect. All right, I want to get down to the basics. And As a proportion of the Now, do you believe? Let me, let me talk about some of the other questions you asked. You asked, what are we doing for jobs? I also want to put this in the context of Oregon is 1% of the United States population. There is very little that Oregon can do on its own by itself to reverse a global economic crisis. What we can do is make sure that we're doing everything we can to position Oregon so that it competes very well with other states. But we cannot solve a national and a global economic crisis by ourselves. Someone told me, uh, an economist told me, for example, it's like running the car heater, but with all the windows down. You know, yes, you might feel a little tiny bit warmer, but not a whole lot, because it, it's getting diluted into the entire atmosphere. So yes, Oregon is doing what it can. I, now, I also want to help put this in context. Forbes Business Magazine, when it rated the best states for business in 2009, we're talking about very recently, just a few months ago, Oregon ranked number 10 of all the states in the U.S. In workers' compensation costs, which is a, a pretty large cost of doing business, since 1991, Oregon's workers' comp costs have declined more than 60%. Uh, CNBC's top states for business, Washington ranked number 22, California ranked number 28, Oregon ranked number 18. We rank ahead of our neighbors, Washington and California. So there are a number of things that we are doing to position Oregon to be as good or better so that we can compete and make sure that we are supporting the private sector. I just want to make one point. People here believe that the private sector supports the government, which is untrue. It doesn't have to be that way. We can grow government so large that government supports itself. Government employees pay taxes. Government employees pay the fees for car registration. And you know what we have then is a socialist state. We have full-fledged communism, same as Soviet Union, and we're growing it. We can grow this government large enough to support itself. Do you understand that? Everything. Um, I'm a big. I'm a big proponent of those type of businesses. So it's a. It's it's a broad question, and there are a lot of opportunities to marry both the rural and the urban economies as as we move forward. What? Is it the question about growing government? Well, I think there, it's a two-part question. I mean, you accused us of trying to grow government. I'm not saying you're trying. It's happening. Industry. It's I happening. That's what's happening. You disagree that government's growing? I disagree that we're growing government more than... Here, right here. <laughs> That's good. Uh, good. Yeah, I want to be helpful. 
Now, I want to be helpful. Yes, um, we all so do. What uh, you're saying is that we're going to grow government. So I'm not much saying you're going to. That's what's happening. Industry, and that's. I'm sorry, but you're, you and I are going to disagree. There's just no way, but we're going to get to a point where we agree. The fact of the matter. You're is trying to say that I'm accusing you of growing it on purpose. I'm saying that's what's happening with okay, the policies well, word. Well, here, here's what I have to say. Okay. Part of the part of the issue is that when we're in a recession and people are out of work, they need services that they don't need otherwise. So the need for service grows. What do you say to someone who says, like people I've met on the doorstep, uh, one guy, 57 years old, has worked, you know, he worked over at um, Country Coach, looking for a job, can't get a job, has been unemployed for, you know, a number of months. Do you want me to say, hey, okay, I'm sorry, so I'm sorry. Are your your solution is to give him a government job then, not build a no, price. What I'm saying is right okay. now we have to, he needs services. He has to ask for services for the first time in his life. So we did extend unemployment. And we're going to do whatever we can to help businesses, which is why we passed the boost bill, so that we give businesses an incentive to hire people, $2,500 per person that they hire, so to offset some of the costs of training. The second thing we've done, now in Lane County, in, in, and I don't have the numbers exactly, but in over 10,000, I think it's around 10,500 businesses in Lane County, over 9,500 are businesses that employ 50 people or less, so small businesses. They don't have access to capital. So what we did at the state level was we made, we made it so that small businesses could have access to capital if they have a program where they can grow jobs. And, and that's important. So say, what do you as private industry need? They say, we need access to capital so that we can grow. Because again, we are a county and we are a state that is dependent on small business. We have a lot of industries that really are getting up and running and doing well, whether it be green jobs, whether it be the wine industry, whether it be um, our, our farmers in the Willamette Valley. We have some of the richest farmland in the country right here in the Willamette Valley. So how do we, help our farmers grow something that they can make money on, that they can actually get to market, and how do we help them market that? Um, and again, I think private-public partnerships, when done right, when done effectively, when done efficiently, are positive. But as Representative Nathanson said, this is a global recession. So it's not like Oregon is standing there, you know, falling down while the rest of the world is, you know, having a Mardi Gras party. I mean, the fact of the matter is worse that than it's most. Worse than some, it's worse than you some had more than one question. I'm yeah, sorry. So the bottom line is, what we're doing is we're doing what we can to get by. We are talking to local businesses. We're talking to other people, and we've got people who are in need. We need to support public safety. We need to support a solid, stable education system so that we can have an educated workforce, and and we need to make sure that we provide for those people who right now need that safety net. Um, and again, as we're looking forward, Oregon, the reason people come to Oregon is it is one of the most beautiful places in the world to be. I would not want to live anywhere else. The fact is that people come here if they can educate their children, if they know they can be safe, and they know that they can make a life for themselves. And that's what we want to market. We want to let people know that they should come here, and we're doing the best we can to do that. Back. Well, what I'm hearing is a lot of, you know, we recently passed measure 66 and 67. The very next day in the newspaper, gee, we don't think we have enough money, now we want another tax. You know, Oregon's government in general is like baby birds, and they go, want, 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 and there's no end to it. You know, I hear you talk about balancing budgets and cost control and overseeing all the state agencies and how they spend their money. And this really torqued me yesterday, and then I, and, and today you mentioned, uh, find my note here, adequate public notice and ramming things through without public input. So last night in the paper, uh, our governor decided to spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to rename Beltline the Ed Pape Parkway. <laughs> now, how does that benefit anyone or save a dollar in today's economy? Wouldn't it have been a much better idea to put a little memorial plaque out there in a couple of places if that's what he wanted to do for a friend? The answer is yes, it would have been a better idea. And
All right, guys, so I'm back from that uh, meeting. It got a little heated for a little while. Uh, I kept interrupting. I apologized, and I took time from other people. But main point, you know, uh, I was just trying to get across. Um, we are growing government out of control. We are growing government to the point of where it can self-sustain itself. I'll have to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, people don't understand that. We don't need the private sector. Government can self-sustain itself. People don't understand that. 